Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Create Up, and welcome to part three of this drone pro production series. In the part one, we talked about pro production, pre production of how you fly the drone, how to attach the 360 camera at the Global Fusion on your DJI Mavic Pro Platinum. Uh, if you missed that tutorial, I definitely suggest to go check out that tutorial first. And then in part two, we we'll talk about an uh, intermediate way to how to flatten your 360 video footage into 2D, create tiny planet video for your Instagram. In part three is the real post-production workflow now to remove drone. And part three, I will divide it into two parts. First, this part is a beginner part. We will try to use really easy way to remove drone. And then the next part, I will teach you how to bring the footage into professional plug in like Mocha VR to remove drone in a professional way, how to track, uh, how to roto, and also how to stabilize your footage. Let's dive right in to learn first how to remove the drone, use purely uh, Premiere and Photoshop. So as you see right here, I'm in Premiere. So here is the footage. Let me just hide the first layer. So again, I click here so you see the VR view. So I go ahead and play the video. And if you look up, you see the drone right here, right? And then if I go ahead, go up, review this layer. Now, same video, still playing, right? Still playing the video, but if you look up, the drone is gone. And you can't really tell. Uh, as you see, the exact same footage, I only use one camera, just a GoPro Fusion, and I successfully removed the drone. So let's teach you how to do exactly that. It's actually very simple. So if you just like throw this layer, uh, this is just a sky layer. I recreate it, uh, but it's the exact same sky that I grabbed from the original footage. So how to do that is actually very easy. So let's just click this button and go back to the normal view. So let's put in the uh, probably the middle frame of this entire frame. So uh, we get an even spread out of the crowd. Okay, go ahead and hide this covered layer. So we get the entire frame uh, with the drone, everything in it. We go ahead right here, yes. So export frame right here, go ahead and take a screenshot of this entire frame. Uh, I would suggest save as, as high resolution as possible, which is TIFF. So go ahead and save it somewhere. Let's go ahead and say OK. And now then go ahead and open Photoshop. So go ahead and find a screenshot you just took right here, drop it into Photoshop. And go ahead and open it inside Photoshop. And then the next step is go ahead and in the 3D layer, go ahead and a spherical panorama. Go ahead and say new panorama layer from selective layers. Go ahead and hit that. And then close this. Uh, so now you create a panorama image in Photoshop, just like what you see inside Premiere. So now go ahead and aim the whole frame to the drone. So uh, as I, if, if you watch my part, one of the tutorial I mentioned about if you can create a long distance between your uh, 360 video camera and the drone, this process will be easier. The reason why if, if you have a really, really long leg, the drone will be really, really small in the frame. And as you see right now, my leg is actually not long at all. It's only one finger length. Uh, if you missed that, go ahead and watch part one of this tutorial. Um, because the, the link is so short, uh, so the drone is actually really big in frame, and that make the roto process uh, a little bit harder. Uh, so if you don't want to spend too much time to just cut the drone out in Photoshop, go ahead and pick a longer leg, so create a greater distance between the camera and the drone. But again, uh, do that in a safety in the safety limit it's because if you want if you carry too much heavy weight um, for the tiny little drone uh, the drone might fail and that is something that you don't want to do so just using common sense um, try to create enough distance do more testing before you take off um, so to me is uh, is not that important i will actually show you why now it's actually very easy even in this challenge footage it's actually very easy to cut this whole thing out so that's what i'm gonna do uh, i'm gonna create a new layer right here over this layer uh, i go ahead and select this entire frame and then go ahead and control c and copy this frame and control v and paste it so right now in layer one we have this footage so now go ahead and just right here hit the chrome tool uh, pick a correct brush size uh, i pick pretty big brush size because it's a pretty big joke so go ahead and hit all somewhere into the crown and start painting so basically what you do is chrome the frame 
into the zone and go ahead and hide the zone completely. Since the sky have a really clear pattern, so uh, so it's actually really easy to clone out uh, the zone like that. Don't forget to clone this area as well uh, because this area is a propeller. You might not see it in the frame, uh, but still is actually in there. So make sure that clone around it as well. So uh, you have a really good coverage of the entire zone and the propeller of the zone. So depend what you clone, I would suggest actually clone a little bit further, like get the crowd here. You just like mix and match and make the whole thing look smooth. See you clone back a little bit propeller here. So uh, you want to get rid of this part. So just keep doing that until you clone the entire frame. So to me, that is pretty much done on the first frame. So uh, go ahead while when you selecting the layer one, hit Control and E or you go right click and merge down, right click on the layer, right here, search merge down, and then merge the layer back to the frame. And now if you go ahead and pan around, you see the drone is mostly gone. So as you see right here, because the drone is actually really big, it's spread out into two frames. So here, a window retouch. So basically, if you have a shorter leg, you just need to do this process a couple of times to really smooth out the sky. So you can really see here, it's not smooth, right? So just do the exact same process, create a new layer, select here, and then just go ahead and copy this entire frame again. Copy and paste on the empty layer. Now go ahead and hit the Chrome tool right here. And this time let's select something like out this frame and just smooth out the frame right here. So after you're done with the chrome, like here, let's say uh, I'm happy about my chroming now. Uh, I think it's pretty smooth. Uh, you can definitely smoother right here. You can definitely fix that uh, if you pay more, spend more time on it. Uh, but this is just a demonstration purpose. So why now? How do I export just the patch? Oh, it's actually very easy. Right here, see that? This vehicle map, double click inside. So this is the frame that you really want in the final result, right? And then go ahead, right here, just select the big part. I would say that big because the drone is actually really big as you see uh, at the footage. So I will select this entire big part. And then right here, go ahead and create um, a layer mask. So I'll just cut out the front part. And then I'll go ahead and just apply the, the mask. And then I'm gonna create some like feather around it so I can easily blend the original frame. So just go ahead and hit the gradient tool um, and just just feather this part out. Well, actually how you feather it is make sure the first select the master. So you gotta feather the mask, not fill gradient. As you see, you just create a little feather uh, because I actually set a pretty big frame so I can feel pretty comfortable to have like a pretty big feather right here. So after you're done, just go ahead Right here, save as, as a PNG file, and just import the same file. Okay, so now go ahead and just unmark the layer. So that's before, after, before, after. And if you're looking at VR mode, again, that is actually after, go ahead, before, Joan. After, no drone. And it's still video, see the car is moving right here. Great, so that is very easy. Uh, you don't actually need any extra parking. All you need is Premiere and Photoshop and just uh, the whole workflow, you just like just repeat the whole workflow. It's taking a screenshot, taking a screenshot of the frame you want and then just bring it to Photoshop, rotate this part out and bring the whole frame back in and just cover it. That's it, easy. Um, that is gonna work 90% of the time, but
but uh, sometimes it's not gonna work. Uh, for scenario what is not working is when the sun setting rapidly, the sky will from turn blue to all the way red, and uh, and everything just moving. And also, if the drone is not going up and down like vertical, it's actually going like in a horizontal format, going really fast. So the crowd is actually moving. Uh, you cannot actually use this like method because. Uh, you patch as a steel frame, the cloud is actually not moving, but if the drone is moving pretty fast, all of a sudden changing color, um, you actually will clearly see there's a static patch. So this will not work in this simple method. So what you need to do then is to go ahead and track the environment uh, of the drone. So like a scanner, if the drone keep moving forward, you will scan around the environment and patch it with the new environment material to cover the drone. That sounds a little bit complicated, but you can easily achieve that with Mocha VR uh, and After Effects. And I will show you in the next tutorial do it exactly how to do that. It's actually very easy. It's complicated as it sounds, but it's actually really easy to do. And in Mocha VR, we can also go ahead and stabilize the horizon. Uh, so as you see, the, even the drone footage with GoPro Fusion is still really not like steady. Uh, if you, you see here, see that is not horizon line. Uh, you can use like the horizon too in Mocha VR to really like strain the horizon and stabilize the whole thing is to make it bodily smooth. And also we will gonna do some like color correction to make this whole fish look great to finish the final product. And that gonna be all in part four. So if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumb up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. And I will see you next time. Yeah.